Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to take you through the notes on completing the square and taking square roots. So we're just going to get straight into some examples here to help you understand this. Um, first thing we're going to take a look at, we're going to solve this thing here for x. Okay, so if we're going to solve for x, that means we got to get everything um, away from the x, right? So if you'll remember on this, we got to do the PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, that's how I was uh, taught it. And the first thing we have to do is addition and subtraction, so this is first. Then we got to do multiplication and division, that's second. And then exponents is third, and parentheses is fourth, okay? So, if we're trying to get, we know that to get rid of this squared, we'll have to square root, right? So this is a square root. To get rid of the 3, that's 3 times this, so we're going to have to divide, right? And then this is a negative 7. To get rid of the negative 7, we have to add 7 on that. So the order that we want to do this, first thing we want to do is addition and subtraction. So this is going to be first. And then the next thing we're going to do is multiply and divide. So this is going to be the second thing we're going to get rid of is the 3. And then the last thing we're going to get rid of is the exponent okay so I'm just gonna rewrite this down here so it's a little bit easier 3x squared minus 7 equals 0 first thing to get rid of is we're gonna add 7 to both sides right so we have 3x squared equals 7 next thing we want to do is divide we gotta get rid of this 3 so we have to divide this both sides here by 3 and we get x squared equals 7 thirds it doesn't end up um, it doesn't end up being nice. It's just just leave it as a fraction. It's okay. I'll show you what we're going to do. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of both sides. And so that gives us x equals. Whenever we take the square root, we have to put plus or minus for our answer over there. And we have 7 thirds. Okay. Now, we can't actually leave it like this. We actually have to do what we call rationalize the denominator. We've got to get that root out of the denominator. So what we want to do is rewrite it like this, plus or minus, and then instead of, we're going to write it as root 7 over root 3, and we just can't have a root in the denominator, so the easiest way to get rid of that root in the denominator is multiply it by another root 3, both top and bottom, right? So we end up getting x equals plus or minus, 7 times 3 is the square root of 21, and root 3 times root 3 gives us root 9 that gave us root 21 right but the square root of 9 we know is 3 and we now no longer have a root in the denominator it's just plus or minus the square root of 21 over 3 okay I know it's not pretty <laughs> but it will uh, it'll work out and it'll get more and more comfortable the more you uh, more you try this out okay so that is actually taking square roots that's that's solving this by taking square roots the other thing we're going to take a look at here is we're going to solve by completing the square. Okay, now the completing the square has a bunch of steps. Wrote them all down for you here. Um, and again, this will be one that will be a little confusing at first, but the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Okay, so wrote the steps out so that we can just follow this step by step. First thing we're going to do is divide all terms by the leading coefficient. Okay, the leading coefficient, is, this is the number that's in front of the largest... Uh, x power of x we call it because this is really x to the first there's no x there so that's officially x to the zero and then that's x squared so this right here this two that there is the leading coefficient coefficient okay so it says divide all terms by the leading coefficient so we're going to divide everything that we have in here by two Okay, so we end up getting x squared. So this is right here. This was step one. So this is x squared now. And that's the whole point of dividing by the leading coefficient. We want to get the x squared to be just plain old x squared. Okay. Negative 12 over 2 is negative 6. Still got an x. And then that's plus 1 half. And then that equals 0. Okay, so we did the first step. Second step, move the constant to the right side. That's the thing that does not have an x with it. 
this right here, this is the constant. Okay, so that means we're going to have to subtract this one half from both sides. Right, so we get x squared minus 6x. And I'm going to leave the space right here equals negative one half because we're going to use this space here in a little bit. Okay, so we move the constant to the right side now. We're, we've done that. Now we're going to find half of the x term, not the x squared, but the x term. So we're going to take this negative 6, divide it by 2, and that gives us negative 3. Okay, so we found half that x term. Now the next step says we're going to square it, and that's this half of the x term. So we're going to take this negative 3. Now uh, I'm going to go back a little bit here. Let's see. Let's do our, let's number our steps. So let's see. This was step 2. This here is step 3. We're going to take this negative 3, and we're going to square it to get 9. So that was step 4. Now we're going to add this. That's, uh, oh, there we go. This 9 here, we're going to add this 9 to both sides. I circled this negative 3 because we're going to end up using this later on, and I'll show you where. But I always, whenever, we, whenever I find the half that x term, I always circle it because I know it's coming back. Um, so we're going to add the 9 to both sides of this equation right here. So we're going to have, that's going to give us x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals negative 1 half also plus 9. So we added 9 to both sides. So this was step 5. Okay. Um, we're now going to write this left side over here as a perfect square. Okay, so what that means is that this here is going to be a perfect square. And here's the thing. This, <clears throat> this is always going to be whatever this half of this middle term here, this negative 3, is always going to go in right here. Right? So if we do x minus 3 times x minus 3, because that's x minus 3 squared. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. x times negative 3 is another negative 3x. And x times x is x squared. If you add those all up, we get x squared minus 6x plus 9, which, look at that, it's that exact thing right there. So this negative 3 is always going to go right here. Well, whatever half of your uh, x term is. Okay, And then on the other side, we're just going to simplify it. So this is um, 9 minus a half. So that's 8 and a half which is also, instead of writing it as 8 and a half, because we're going to have to do some other uh, math with this here. So that 8, we can multiply that by 2. 16 plus 1 is, let's call that 17 halves. This is going to make it a little bit easier for us to rationalize the denominator. Okay? Okay, so we have now written this as a perfect square. Last thing we're going to do is solve this thing for x. So in order to get the x by itself, the first thing we have to do, I know people are saying, it's like, wait, i got to add 3 to get rid of that 3, but the this square here, we have to get rid of that first because that's in with the parentheses here. So we have to square root both sides first. So when we square the square root and the square cancel each other out, and we get x minus 3 equals, whenever we take the square root, it's plus or minus root 17 over root 2. Um, let's see, and then we have, let's do this. Let's rationalize this denominator first, and then we'll move that 3 over. We could do it either way, but I think this will make it a little bit easier. Multiply both top and bottom by root 2, okay, and we get x minus 3 equals plus or minus 17 times 2 is square root of 34, Root 2 times root 2 is root 4, which is just 2. And then our last step is to add 3 to both sides. So we end up getting x equals, and we usually put this 3 in front of this plus minus. We do 3 plus or minus square root 34 over 2. And that is our... Um, and that is... That's how we solve this thing here by completing the square, okay? So this was step 7 down here. Um, we actually started step 7 up here, didn't we? Okay, so 3 plus or minus the square root of 34 
over 2, which I know does not look pretty, but it is doable, okay? Okay. Okay, that's all uh, <clears throat> we really have for completing the square and taking square roots. Um, there is going to be a second video just doing a couple more of these, um, like doing a square root and a completing the square, just in case you want to see some more examples. Okay, if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask. Thanks.